and we are back. Hey all So it has been a really, really long time since my last video. And there's a reason for it. Um, I had a strep infection that went to my brain and I got seizures, I was hospitalized, and suffice to say, <laughs> Months later, I'm thousands of dollars in debt for the hospitals and stuff. It's it's been a nightmare. But y'all have been waiting for new content for forever. So I thought that we would get this out of the way. Now, one thing to keep in mind, um, for those of you that are in common about body and stuff, I have an immune disorder, okay? I have an IgG deficiency. Now that fucks with my gut and everything, so I, I'm sorry if I don't look the way you want me to look or something, or I'm too fat or whatever. I don't care. I don't care. So, go ahead, comment. Alright, so outside of that, today's lesson is going to be talking about the five biggest trans voice mistakes people make. Now, the first one is actually the engagement of the vestibular folds or the grunting muscles, right? <coughs> Those muscles. When we do a whisper siren. Now, some of you may know this exercise as the vampire breath or a whisper slide. Unfortunately, this original exercise I designed, the whisper siren was commandeered, stolen, and renamed by some of the other big voice teacher. So if you hear vampire breath, you hear whisper slide, those were commandeered, not the original. Now, what's important about that is that the original has some really, really important pieces. Now, for the whisper siren, you want to make sure that you're not pushing a ton of air pressure. Right, we have what's known as subglottal air pressure, which is created from our lungs, and that comes up beneath our vocal folds, and that creates a certain level of pressure. Now, when we put too much, we can get engagement of muscles we don't want, like the vestibular folds. And unless you're doing death metal, you don't want to engage those. So the way to fix this is when you're sliding up, Keep it quiet. You know, we don't have to push a lot. Keep it really nice and quiet. Good. Okay. Now, our second biggest mistake for a trans voice is the changing of enunciation in the female voice. I can't tell y'all how many times I see students who come to me and they, you know, they're talking normally in their low voice. And then they come up and they're talking like this or they change the enunciation a little bit. And it's like, wait, what happened? Now, this is kind of a, a psychological thing I often see from people. People will uh, initially assume that, oh, this is a different coordination. This is a different voice. So it's gonna sound different and I'm gonna have to talk different and enunciate different in this. But that couldn't be further from the truth, all right? So the fix is practicing. If you're when the sunlight strikes three drops in the air, if you're doing when the sunlight strikes three drops in the air, or the gift is a prison form a rainbow, right? You're changing how you enunciate. Go down to your male voice, and we're gonna do the same phrase. So if we're doing when the sunlight strikes three drops in the air, you would slow that down, right? So you want to focus specifically on the tip of your tongue and the arch, okay? So you want to make sure that the tip of your tongue goes to the same places it does down low and up high. So when, do it in slow motion, kind of like, uh, yeah, I don't know, matrix, slow motion, bullet time, or whatever you want to call it, right? When the Sunlight strikes, so rain drops, rain. Specifically focus on the tip of your tongue. Where does it go for enunciating consonants? Where does it go for enunciating certain vowels, right? 
So you want to make sure that the tip of your tongue is going to the same places. Now, when the sunlight strikes raindrops in the air, they act as a prism and form a rainbow. When the sunlight strikes raindrops in the air, they act as a prism and form a rainbow. Right? So you'll see. When the sunlight, obviously I'm dropping my jaw more for this male sound. not dropping as much. So the idea is we still drop our jaw a little bit. Not too much. But just a little bit. When the sunlight, specifically on that, the when the, when the sunlight strikes, strikes. Right, there's that drop. When the sunlight strikes. Bigger drop for the male voice, but we still get a little bit of a drop for our female voice. Now, this is primarily referencing the placement of the tip and arch of the tongue, so the front and middle. Now, in voice feminization, one of the general rules of thumb is bringing the tongue root forward, and this creates a smaller space within our oral cavity, our second resonator, our two. So when we bring our tongue forward like this, um, we can get a sound more like this. Now, the problem with that is people will bring the back of the tongue forward and then they change how they move the tip of their tongue. So don't change the tip when, even with my tongue forward. When the sunlight. When the sunlight, right, you know, when the sunlight, you can see my tongue is retracted more here. When the sunlight. So we want to keep the back part forward while still keeping the tip and the middle of the tongue enunciating relatively uh, consistent with the lower voice. Now, of course, there are exceptions to this rule, but this is a general um, idea to kind of aim for. So now the next big mistake people make, and this is number three, is an extreme depressed tongue root, okay? So this kind of uh, ties into the second one, changing enunciation. So, but- With the extreme, you know, tongue root retraction, we can get kind of a Kermit the Frog type sound. And um, this is not a very good sound to have, right? It, it doesn't feel very good because my tongue is, oh my God, look at that. It's all the way down here. <laughs> it's not really usable for your female voice. Now, the fix for this is generally aiming to have the tip of your tongue touch behind your bottom row of teeth and the arch arched towards your molars. When the, when the sunlight. Right? And that will keep the back of the tongue from depressing too far. Now, one thing to take a note of um, a little bit of tongue depression is okay and may actually occur naturally if you struggle with a condition like TMJ, like I do. And TMJ, you know, the opening, the ability to open the jaw, to pretty much anything you want with the jaw is compromised. Now, what a lot of folks don't take into consideration is if there's TMJ, if the jaw is compromised, a lot of the time, so is the tongue. So the tongue may make adjustments to try to um, make up for what the jaw is unable to do, acoustically speaking. So a little bit of tongue retraction is okay. When the sunlight, when the, right, you can see a little bit there. And I have TMJ, so it's harder for me. But generally- It's not the same as Kermit the Frog even talking in a male voice, right? Hey, 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 hey. Not the same. Now, the fourth biggest mistake people make is raising the larynx to shorten the y-axis of the vocal tract. The vocal tract being the distance from our larynx to our lips. Raising the larynx as high as it can go, but then keeping the vellum, the soft palate, raised. And this is something that a lot of the other trans voice teachers don't talk too much about. They talk about, well, raise the larynx and then you're good, right? Obviously, it's not that simple, right? Because we also have the pharynx that we gotta focus on. But as far as the y axis 
axis of the focal tract. This is important because we, if we have our larynx up and our uvula and our soft palate are raised, then the vertical parameters of our vocal tract are not as short as we think they are, right? So we actually want to practice keeping the uvula, the little punching bag thing, lowered, right? So you can use a flashlight if this is helpful, but the idea, hold on, I have a student messaging me for some reason, that's really bizarre. All right, hold on. Okay, we're back. So with this, jeez, oh my God, okay. So you generally want to be able to keep the uvula down keep the wall around the uvula narrowed. And that will make sure that your vertical parameter of your vocal tract is not tricking you, right? You're not gonna be like, oh, well, my larynx is up high enough. Why do I still sound like deep, right? That's where we have to look at the vellum, the soft palate, right? And the uvula, okay. Now, this is not an end-all be-all rule, right? Because, and here's the reasoning, at different points within our range, we have to make, or we can, I should say, make adjustments. So if we're doing a belt, like, hey, hey, you can see for that, my larynx is up, my pharyngeal wall is narrowed, but the soft palate raises a little bit, and so does the uvula. So reasonably, we can, and this is not an end-all be-all rule, but if the uvula is up, usually the soft palate is too, or the vellum, however you want to refer to it. Now, the fifth biggest mistake people make is speaking in falsetto. Now, this one kind of goes without saying, uh, you know, falsetto, head voice, Mickey Mouse voice, or M2, however you may know it, is not as effective if we're spending a lot of time in this range, right? Even if we bring, you know, falsetto down, hey guys, how's it going? Hey guys, how's it going, right? You can kind of make it sound realistic, but never fully. So, um, let me turn that off, okay. Oh my God, Jesus, why? I'm 10 minutes and 12 minutes into this freaking video. All right, let me turn the notifications off for this. <laughs> Worst possible time. Okay. So, <clears throat> even if you speak in falsetto, even if you bring it down lower, it's still not going to give you the power um, and the usability that your full voice would. And thus, it's never really going to sound natural. Even if you kind of finesse it and you bring it down a little bit and you're like, hey guys, how's it going? My name is Zoe, right? That kind of sounds a little bit further away from falsetto, but it technically still is. So the way that we can do this is utilizing an exercise I've designed, which is known as the mechanism check. Now, this comes back to LVM's laryngeal vibratory mechanisms. Are you vocalizing before the break in your voice or after? Falsetto, Mickey Mouse voice, all of these coordinations happen after the voice has broken. Now, what we want to aim for is primarily seeing in the coordinations before we flip. So if we're having issues, we're on C4, and we're doing when the sunlight strikes three drops in the air, right? And you're defaulting the falsetto, when the sunlight strikes three drops in the air. What you can do, start on G4, so we're going to go up. Da, slide down the C4, stay in the same coordination, same feeling. It's going to sound really kind of fakey. Your voice may cut out a little bit. That's normal and that's okay. Now from here, ah, this is mechanism two, right? We're going to say a phrase like this. Ah, my name is Zoe, this is mechanism two. And then we're going to switch back to our full voice. And to make this simple, we're going to default to vocalizing louder in our full voice. Um, my name is Zoe, right? So we're not gonna, uh, my name is Zoe, even though it's technically, uh, 
hi, my name is Zoe. That's still an M1, that's still in my full voice. We don't wanna kind of get close to falsetto or the acoustic configuration similarities to that. So we wanna keep them as separate as possible. One is loud and in your full voice, one is in falsetto and quiet. Uh, my name is Zoe. Uh, my name is Zoe. Right, the second one being falsetto. So if you go back and forth, uh, my name is Zoe. This is mechanism two. Uh, my name is Zoe. This is mechanism one. Uh, my name is Zoe. This is mechanism two. Uh, my name is Zoe. This is mechanism one. Uh, my name is Zoe. This is mechanism two. Uh, my name is Zoe. This is mechanism one. Uh, my name is Zoe. This is mechanism one. Uh, my name is Zoe. This is mechanism two. Right, you can see how much you can do. Now, if this video is at all helpful, definitely leave a comment, uh, leave a like, subscribe, and if you're interested in taking your voice to the next level, whether you're here for voice masculinization, voice androgenization, leaning femme, you know, you can have an androgynous voice that kind of leans femme, or you can have an androgynous voice that kind of leads, leans male, right? Or 50 shades of your female voice, if you want a voice like this, kind of like um, an anime girl or whatever, I can teach that. If you want a voice like mine, I can teach that. If you want a sultry female voice, I also teach that. So head over to natfemvoice.com and check out our information. The link will be in the description. All right, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and definitely leave those hate comments. This would not be my channel without the hate.